So let's start to talk about antibodies, um, which are these protein structures that you're probably very familiar with. But as we're going to see, antibodies uh, refer to a protein complex that's actually found uh, in a number of different places. So um, just to review, antibodies are a four protein complex. So they've got four protein chains in them. And we're going to spend a lot of time learning about where these protein chains come from, the genes that make them. So there are two heavy chain proteins. These are the larger, longer proteins on the outside of the Y. They're longer, um, and they're he called heavy chains because on a gel, they were noticed to have a large molecular weight compared to these two smaller proteins that are found in an antibody called light chains. So there are two light chains, which are identical to one another, and two heavy chains, which are identical to one another. And this four protein complex is known as an antibody, and you're probably familiar with that concept. Now, the thing about antibodies is they're secreted, right? So when this Y-shaped protein molecule is present in your humors or your fluids, that's when we call it an antibody. But this complex can also exist inserted into the membrane of B cells. So it is membrane bound at some point in its life cycle, the life cycle of an antibody. So it exists in a different form. When it's in the plasma membrane of a B cell, it's actually called something else. It's not called an antibody. It's called a B cell receptor. And if you're familiar from biochemistry with the concept of a receptor protein, a receptor protein would be something found on the surface of a cell embedded in the plasma membrane, and it would bind a ligand. It would bind something on the outside of the cell. So antibodies can exist either free-floating and soluble and secreted near humors, or they're inserted into the plasma membrane of a B cell. And when they are in the membrane of the plasma B, of a B cell, we don't call them antibodies. We call them either a B cell receptor or we call them an immunoglobulin. And so you've heard that term before, immunoglobulin or Ig. So these three terms, antibody, immunoglobulin, and B cell receptor, can be used somewhat interchangeably. So immunoglobulin can refer to either the membrane, membrane, sorry, membrane bound version or the soluble version. So the soluble secreted version of an immunoglobulin is typically referred to as an antibody. The membrane bound version of an immunoglobulin is typically referred to as a B cell receptor because this receptor is going to be used for, by the B cell to recognize an infection. So going back to the themes of the immune system, uh, the immune system has to recognize an infection as something that doesn't belong in the body and then have to unleash an effector mechanism to remove the infection or the pathogen from the body. So when Ig or immunoglobulin is in its membrane bound form, it's part of the B cell receptor and its main function is to recognize a pathogen. That B cell on the left, that's not attacking any pathogen, that's recognizing pathogen using the Ig as a B cell receptor. On the right, uh, if that B cell on the left recognized the pathogen, it can unleash the, B, the immunoglobulin in its soluble form as a secreted antibody. And that has the effector functions, which means neutralization, opsonization, activating complement, etc. And so we'll go into detail into both how B cells recognize an infection and how antibodies remove pathogens from the body in later videos. But I want to introduce the concept here of the immunoglobulin molecule, which is just this four protein chain complex, at existing in two different forms. The secreted form, commonly referred to as antibodies, or the membrane-bound form, commonly referred to as the B cell receptor. Okay, so antibodies, B cell receptors, immunoglobulins, we're going to use those terms somewhat interchangeably. Um, they are variable. So what does that mean, variable? So proteins, right, immunoglobulins, B cell receptor antibodies, I just said were made from protein chains, heavy chains, light chains. So the heavy chain protein must come from a gene. And in fact, we're going to learn about the heavy chain gene. So there's a heavy chain gene, 
and when it's transcribed and translated, it will make heavy chain proteins. So here are three B cells. Each of them express the heavy chain gene. Each of them is gonna make a heavy chain protein. Now, what do I mean by variable, that aminoglobulins or antibodies are variable? So the thing about the heavy chain gene is part of the gene is variable between these B cells, between all B cells, and part of the heavy chain gene is constant. What does that mean? Well, genes uh, have the instructions uh, of DNA that code for protein. So in all of these B cells, one, two, and three, and all of the B cells in your body, the part of the gene of the heavy chain gene that says constant on it makes the same uh, amino acid um, sequence in all of those proteins. So the heavy chain gene has a constant region, the amino acids uh, that are coded for by the constant region, same in uh, many B cells. But the thing about the variable region of the heavy chain gene is it's different between B cells. And we're going to learn this process called somatic recombination or VDJ recombination. So each one of these B cells could have different DNA in the variable portion of the heavy chain gene. So for B cell number one, it has DNA that makes some sort of protein shape due to its sequence of amino acid. B cell number two, it's got different DNA in the variable region of the gene, and that's going to make a different chain of amino acids which is with a different three-dimensional structure. Amino acid, uh, B cell number three, it's got different DNA in the heavy chain gene variable region, and its protein structure is different than the rest. So in the heavy chain gene, we've got instructions that are constant from all B cells and instructions that are variable between all B cells. How does DNA uh, be different in all these B cells? Uh, the process of recombination involves cutting and pasting random pieces of DNA together to get random amino acid sequences to put in these variable regions. So when we talk about the protein and the gene, we talk about variable regions of the protein. They're going to vary between all these B cells and the constant region of the protein. They're going to be consistent and the same between all these B cells. So the variable region of the heavy chain protein comes from the variable region of the heavy chain gene, and the same thing with the constant region. Um, this is one way by which B cell receptors or Ig or antibodies can vary from one B cell to the next. Let's go to talk about the light chain gene, making the light chain protein. So these are all B cells. They all turn on uh, the light chain gene to make the light chain protein. Same thing with the light chain protein as the heavy chain protein. There's going to be this process called VDJ recombination. And so the beginning of the light chain gene will be different in all of these B cells. The end of the light chain gene will be constant in all these B cells. So the light chain protein will look the same in all these B cells, but the heavy chain, I'm sorry, the, um, the light chain protein constant region is the same in all these B cells, but the light chain protein variable region is different in all these B cells. Again, how's that gonna happen? Shuffling, uh, cutting, and pasting random pieces of DNA uh, through this process called it VDJ recombination. So B cell one will have a certain uh, um, sequence of amino acids uh, in its light chain. B cell number two, different amino acids because it has different DNA in the variable region. B cell number three, different amino acids, different three-dimensional shape because of the variable region of the, heavy, of the light chain gene. So again, um, we've got variable regions of the protein, of the light chain protein, coming from the variable region of the heavy of the light chain gene. And we've got the constant region of the light chain protein coming from the constant region of the light chain gene. We're going to spend more time in future videos talking about the, the, the genes themselves and the recombination that occurs to them. But I just want to talk about how genes um, translate into protein structures and how those protein structures can be variable. So all three of these B cells, even though they all have the light chain gene turned on, they all have variable or different um, regions in their light chain protein and their heavy chain protein. So what does that mean? Um, that means antibodies, uh, these structures, if they're embedded in the um, B cell, we typically call, about, call them immunoglobulins or B cell receptors, 
but they're all going to have this thing called the antigen binding site. So where the heavy chain and the light chain variable regions come together, that's known as the antigen binding site. So molecules that are not uh, supposed to be in the body can try to be recognized using the combination of variable regions in the heavy chain and the light chain. So each immunoglobulin slash Ig slash B cell receptor has two antigen binding sites, and we'll talk more about their structures um, in the future. But you can see that they're created from the variable regions of the heavy and light chain proteins. Um, well, I guess we should define the term antigen. An antigen is any molecule that would be non-self that would be recognized by the immune system. So, and this could be any molecule uh, for um, antibodies slash immunoglobulins. They can bind anything. Proteins, they can bind carbohydrates, they can bind lipids, they can even bind nucleic acids such as DNA. So the three-dimensional shape that is in the um, antigen binding site could fit theoretically any three-dimensional shape of any molecule. And we'll talk more about that in the future videos. Um, I sort of redrawn the uh, B cells to be a little more structurally different here. So B cells one, two, and three, they all have heavy chain protein, they all have light chain protein, they all have this B cell receptor. But you can see in the blue regions, those are the variable regions of the light and the heavy chain, the three-dimensional shapes are different. The antigen binding sites are different. That is because of the variable region of the genes, which we'll talk very much in detail in the genes uh, shortly. So um, when a B cell uh, tries to recognize a pathogen, it's going to use its antigen binding sites to see if it can bind or have affinity for um, some molecule on the surface of a pathogen. So for example, here's a bacteria and it's got some protein on its surface, right? So if a B cell recognizes a um, pathogen due to its antigen binding site, and by, by recognize, I mean it has affinity for, right? So the um, antigen binding site of the B cell receptor binds to, fits on, this protein or antigen. So we can call it now an antigen because it binds an antigen binding site. And in fact, the shape of the three-dimensional structure that the antibody binds, or the immunoglobulin binds, it, we would call that the epitope. So those sort of curly parts right here of the um, antigen fit in to the antigen binding site. So B cell number one would recognize this as a pathogen. B cell number two, well, it's not going to recognize this cell. So B cell two, number two, that's no help to us, not recognizing the pathogen. B cell number three, well, I don't see anything on the pathogen surface that B cell number three could bind. But it is possible, let's say, that there's another uh, protein or lipid on the other side of the pathogen, and that has an epitope that would fit into the antigen binding site of B cell number three. So it is possible B cell number one and three could recognize this pathogen, and if it does, it will unleash an attack of antibodies. So, um, this brings us to the back to the idea that um, B cell receptors, IgEs, or antibodies are variable. They are different between all, you can see all three of these, uh, they have different bindings. Um, they can bind different molecules, but they're also specific. Right? B cell number one would bind something that B cell two and three wouldn't bind. B cell two would bind something that B cell one or three wouldn't bind. So when antibodies or immunoglobulins are generated by B cells, they are different between all of the B cells and they're specific for only certain epitopes. So um, how many possible um, specific antibodies or immunoglobulins can a human generate? So through the process of VDJ or somatic combination, randomly cutting and pasting together pieces of DNA, it's uh, in a practical sense about a trillion or 10 to the ninth different uh, molecules that a human can make uh, of uh, immunoglobulin. Uh, the theoretical limit is about 10 to the 16th. So we're going to go into great detail into how um, heavy chains and light chains are recombined to give you the variable region in later videos. But I just wanted to introduce the concept initially of 
antibodies and immunoglobulins being the same thing. And if their uh, immunoglobulins are in the membrane of a B cell, we call them the B cell receptor, and they're going to bind antigens. And if they bind antigens, the B cells will activate and will release the antibodies that will recognize and destroy, hopefully, the pathogen.